of the sheep in mine ears and the lowering of the oxen which I hear. He said, so what is all this stuff coming back with you? I hear all this kettle, I hear all this kicking, I hear all this stuff. You don't supposed to come back with none of this. You're supposed to kill everything. But he said he performed the commandments of God. Lying. Go ahead. And so I say, they have brought them from the Amalek to you. Uh -huh. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. You know how we do it. We don't take the best of all and just put the name of Jesus on it. That ain't what he said. I'm going to go over here to the scripture part. I'm just going to have fun. But I'm just going to be witnessing by Jesus. You know you ain't supposed to be over there. Come on, I'm going to be the representative. Represent. You represent it every year? <laughs> every year they have Christmas? You still over there? Amen. Who are you fooling? You ain't fooling God? You over there because you want to join up with him. You want to have fun with him. I'm going to be delighted now. Okay, go ahead, man. <laughs> Verse 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me. He said, I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. Go ahead. This night. And he said unto him, Say on. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribe of Israel, and the Lord anointed? King, uh, the king over Israel. He said, Saul, you didn't even know the, you, you didn't know the amount of responsibility I gave you. I gave you to be king over my whole Israel. He couldn't fathom that in his mind. And God said, you ain't understand that when thou was little, he said, when thou was little in, in thy our own sight, was thou made the head of the tribes of Israel? That's a great responsibility, just like you and me in here. We the priests. We supposed to be teaching the word. But when the word starts teaching you, you start backsliding toward the word, guess what? God won't deal with you. Go ahead, bro. Verse 18. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. He said, this is what the Lord told you to do. Go ahead, but you doing different. Go ahead. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and, and did evil in the sight of the Lord? You did evil because you got confused with this money, these possessions, these things. That's what kept Israel up all the time. Now. If you just go back in the history and look at from Judges all the way back, all the time they're looking at the other nations and what they have. Ooh, look at that bitch. They got this. They got that. They got cars. They got plane. I'm talking about this day and time. They're always looking at other people. And the prosperity of the fools are killing us. They sell their soul for the little nothing. That's right, bro. And that's what Saul did. He sold himself for some cows, for some just spoils. Man, you're the king of Israel. You can have it all. Go ahead, brother. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me hmm. and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, Go and ahead. have utterly destroyed the Amalek. He didn't tell you to bring King Agag. Go ahead. But the people took up the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, Go ahead. to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Go ahead. And Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. See, we got to understand to obey is better than bringing money to the church. Money don't mean nothing to God like that. Exactly. It don't. You think because you brought money to church that you supposed to be somebody? No. Some of the worst talking who got a lot of money. Because they think they can buy their way. And that's what, that's what Saul got caught up on. Mm. Go ahead, bro. This is what happened here. Verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity uh -huh. and adultery. 
Uh -huh. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Boy, ooh, that's a high punishment. When the Lord rejects you, you pretty much done. You pretty much done. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 1. Let's look at that. When Saul backslide, God took something from him. He took something from him. But one thing about God, when he takes something from him, he already replaced it with something <laughs> that's not too good. 1 Samuel chapter uh, 16 and verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long would thou mourn for Saul? See, Samuel was sitting up there mourning for Saul, like, Lord, just give him a chance. Get to give him a chance. God said, How long are you going to mourn for Saul? I'm done with him. When God rejects you, that's it. Go ahead. See, and I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Mm -hmm. Fear thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. See, this is when, this is when David stepped on the scene. He said, forget Saul. I'm done with him. I want you to go down there and you anoint Jesse's son, which is David. He's going to be the king of Israel. Hmm. But when God takes something from you and rejects you, he's going to send something else. Jump down to verse 14. Let's look at that. Verse 14. Go ahead. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. See, when you reject God, he takes his Holy Spirit away from us. He took his Holy Spirit away from Saul. That's our guy. Just like we talked about last week. About the Holy Spirit. Paul, Saul had that. But he took it away. But one thing about it, when you backslide against God, he takes the Holy Spirit away. He's going to send them evil spirits on you. And they're going to come and make you do some crazy things to hurt yourself. Go ahead. Verse 15. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubled in thee. From who? God. God said that. Don't nothing come about this world as God okay. Understand that. Go ahead. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man. Yes, sir. Who is a common player on an heart. Yes, sir. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. The evil spirit from who? God. He got David to come in there and play some music so the evil spirit will get off his mind. Mm. Let's continue with this. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 28 or 1. Let's see what happened. The king saw when he backslide. And it just went off the scale. When God takes your Holy Spirit away from you, believe me, all hell break loose. And when I'm talking about hell, I ain't talking about, I'm talking about a condition. More way you can uh, define hell in the Bible. It's a state of condition. First Samuel chapter 28, and verse 1, and we're going to jump to 5. Go ahead, brother. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare, mm -hmm. to fight with Israel. Verse 5. And when Saul saw the hosts of the Philistines. You did 28? I mean, did 1? Yes. We did it all again. I mean, won't say so. Go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. I'm just not ready to no. <laughs> I started over. Right. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war warfare mm -hmm. to fight with Israel. Uh -huh. And a a, a uh -huh. said unto David, Know thou surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men. So Saul got a great battle coming up against the Philistines. Great battle. And he wants some type of leadership. He won't know what to do with these people because these people are great and strong. Jump down to verse 5. When the Holy Spirit leaves you, your guidance is messed up. You won't, when you start backsliding, you don't know where to step, who to talk to, or who to believe. And Saul was out there in the middle of nowhere because he always was guided by the prophets and he had the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. 
See what I'm saying? Yeah, all hell done broke loose on Saul. He don't know what to do. Go ahead. And when Saul required of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, not by Urim, not by prophets. See what he said? He didn't even answer Saul at all. Go ahead. One thing about it, when you don't have the Holy Spirit leading the guy to you and, and, and the man of God with you, you start leaning to evil stuff, evil spirits. Listen to them voices. Mm -hmm. Like this lady talking about she cut a, a three-month-old child head off, decapitated her. Said the Lord told her to cut it off. Listen to an evil spirit. This stuff going on. Y'all see this stuff on the news? I watch the news. These folks are evil. They deal with all these evil spirits. And believe me, they up in here too. They everywhere. So you know, you find the evil spirit, the spirit in the church. Go ahead. Then said Saul unto his servant, Seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire for her. Mm -hmm. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit at Endor. Seek me out of Miss Cleo. Disciple. You know, back then, this Cleo and all that stuff. They had them back then. Same stuff going on. The psychic hotline. This up right here. Seriously, mm -hmm. that's all it is. One thing about it, when you can't find answers, they start searching in these different types of places. And they're trying to look for some answers. Mm -hmm. And they lead them up to destruction. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went. And two men with him, uh -huh. and they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, uh -huh. whom I shall name unto thee. Well, he wanted this, this woman, or Miss Cleo, we're going to say, to bring this evil spirit up. We know what the dead, some of died at this time. What Saul wanted him to do, wanted this, this woman with the familiar spirit to bring up Samuel so he can tell him what to do. And God, and this woman gonna understand that Saul kept, told, he kept off all those people that had familiar spirit and he put them out of the land of Israel. And she gonna tell him about this. Go ahead, verse nine. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul has done, how he has cut off those that have familiar spirit, uh -huh. and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore, then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? She said, I know who you are, Saul. You ain't finna kill me, because you know, I know how you kill all people that had them uh, seeking out familiar spirits. Go ahead. And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, that shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Go ahead. Then said the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. Now we know you can't bring up nobody from the dead. Understand, you got these familiar spirits that hook to you. They know a lot about you. They listen to you. They can sound just like your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister. And you saying that, it got to be my mama. They got to be only her and me know this. Mm -hmm. No. That familiar spirit been listening for a lot of years. He been here since the word was created. Go ahead. Verse 12. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? She seen, she, she didn't see Samuel the prophet. She saw familiar. She saw uh, uh, Familiar spirit, go ahead. For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God ascending out of the earth. Go ahead. And he said unto her, What form is he all? Uh -huh. And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. So he saw perceived. He ain't, that ain't Samuel. He perceived that he wanted to be Samuel. But believe me, that devil, he'll transform himself into ministers of, right. of God. Mm -hmm. Try to transform himself. False ministers. Go ahead. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. 
Bow to a man. Go ahead. And Samuel, and Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answers me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Go ahead. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then doest thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? He tell you, why are you asking me? The Lord is departed from you. And basically what this evil spirit is going to say, he's going to tell him everything that's going to happen to him, which is how he's going to come up against the Philistine and, and get killed. Period. When you start, when God takes his Holy Spirit away from you, you start dealing with these familiar spirits, they're not going to tell you 100% a lie. They're going to tell you a lot of truth. That's right. That's how they can fool you. A great deceiver will tell you 90% of truth and 10% of a lie. Understand that? They're like when Satan did the Eve in the, in the garden. He told a lot of the truth. But one thing about it, she didn't understand. But let's go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 31. In verse 1. Let's see what happened to Saul for his backslide. Let's see what happened to him. You get caught up in the mix of this stuff, boy. You can mess you and your family up. You understand? I tell people all the time, it's just not just me on the line. It's my wife and kids on the line too because I'm their teacher. Let's see what happened to Saul. Verse 1. Go ahead. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gibbo. This is the battle that he was saying. What he going to do in this battle? He seen this battle like, man, he's going to mount up an army against me. He know they were great. But go ahead. This is what it says here. And the Philistines fought hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abiah. Abinadab. Abinadab and Melchizedek, Mep uh -huh. Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. The archers hit him, and the ones that had those arrows, they shot him and wounded him. Go ahead. Then said Saul unto his arch back, ar arch armor bearer, armor bearer, uh -huh. draw thy sword and trust me. Through their will. He said, Tell him his armor bearer, go on and carry his armor. Not the ones they got, the preacher got these little these folk following behind them, taking the shoes off, opening the doors up, and fixing their plate. Yeah, I mean, these these are gonna twist at that part. An armor bearer is the one that carries the king's armor. That's all he do. Not his servant, like, if that's for the king, that ain't for no man of God. Jesus ain't had no armor bearer. Well, listen to what he say here. When they came up against him, Saul did some crazy stuff. He thrust himself. I mean, he took a sword and stuck it inside himself. This man committed suicide. Mm. Go ahead. Read it for a moment. Uh, then said Saul unto his armor bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through their will, lest these uncircumcised uh -huh. come and, tr and thrust me through uh -huh. and abuse me. Yes, sir. But his armor bearers would not, for he was so afraid. Mm -hmm. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. He took a sword and commit, took his own life, killed himself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So look what he dumb as did. Go ahead. And, when, and when, his, when his armor bearers saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. <laughs> they killed themselves too. This crazy stuff. When you follow that little familiar spirit of evil spirit and the Holy Spirit leave you, this is the outcome. Suicide. Let's look at another. Let's go to Luke chapter 22 and verse 1. Let's look at Judas. Well, that Holy Spirit is very, very important. Like I said before. Are you ready to get baptized and know you understand? If you know you understand everything you need to understand, you're gonna follow it right. Do it. 
That's where the real power comes. That's when God creates, increase your knowledge. You get your, uh, your gift from him. But you got to know something first. I don't suggest you get baptized you just playing around. Because he is a jealous husband. You marry the Lord when you come out of that water. <laughs> you marry him. Luke chapter 22 and verse 1. Let, let's look at the uh, Judas right here. One of the 12 disciples. See what happened to him. Verse 1, go ahead. Now, the feast of unleavened bread drew now, which is called the Passover. Yes, sir. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. So the chief priest and scribes wanted to kill Jesus that day. Well, Jesus already knew what time it was. He knew what time it was. He knew that this was going to come about, him being killed. And Judas just was used in that way. Well, listen, look what happened. Go ahead. Then entered Satan into Judas' surname Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. You mean you tell me that one of the twelve, Judas was one of the twelve disciples. Then entered Satan here, meaning he got in his mind. He didn't just jump inside of him like we talked about before. No, he got in his mind. And he told him what to do. Go ahead. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Go ahead. And they were glad and, and covenant to give him money. See, this thing about when you say you're sold for money, only bad things are going to come about. He was, they, he was glad. And they was glad too because, you know, Judas, he betrayed Jesus. They didn't know who Jesus was. He looked just like his brother. Just like all of them. The only way they knew who Jesus was, Judas came up and kissed him on the cheek. And that's how they got Jesus. That's right. Mm. Go ahead. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Go ahead. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. That's the day that Jesus died. But okay, let's look and see what happened to Judas. Let's go to Matthew chapter 27 and verse 1. I just want to show you how when you're dealing with Satan, he gets in your mind and have you doing some of everything. And it ain't going to benefit nothing. All that money that you get, all the money that most people see in the world, want a $65 million jet, it ain't going to benefit you no way in the king. You're dealing with an evil spirit. You're making merchandise out of these people. Merchandise. That's all these people mean to you. And most people inside the church, if they keep these folks happy, or they want them to come and pay their bills. Keep coming. So you can pay my bills. They ain't gonna preach like we preach in Israel. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 1. Let's see what happened to Judas. Because he backslid. It's another form of back, backslide. Go ahead. When the morning was come. All the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. Ready to put him to death. We know that Jesus died on the Passover. Go ahead. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Go ahead. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests, and elders. So he saw that what he did. He repented and said, it was too late, man. Sometimes it's too late. Too late. He knew what he did was wrong. But go ahead. Listen to what happened to him. Saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Yes, sir. And they said, what is that to us? Like, what is that to us? That's what we paid you for, Jews. You know what I'm telling me about that? We know that. We the one wanted you to betray him. Go ahead. Verse 5. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Same so thing that Saul was doing too. He went to kill himself. Same thing. When you're dealing with these evil spirits, you backslide from the truth, you open yourself up. Satan is too powerful for you to mess with. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. This will be the last one. Don't die in the sin. Don't die in 
And these men died in their sin. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. You got to be real careful when you're dealing with backsliding from the top, especially when you know something. When you know this word, excuse me, when you know this word, when you know it, don't come off of it. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Your friends ain't going to like it too much. But believe me, I'm not joining my friends. That ain't my friend. I'm not joining these people who I associate with in the leg of fire. I'm not joining them now. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. Go ahead. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. See what he said? Hey, you said willfully after you know what you're supposed to do. There ain't no more sacrifice for sin. No. That's the Judas and Saul. Well, they might be in a, they're going to be in a lake of fire. Go ahead. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall divide the adversaries. That's what the destination is when you sin willfully after you ignore the truth. Go ahead. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Go ahead. Or how much sore punishment Suppose ye shall he be through the word uh -huh. who has trodden on the foot the Son of God mm. and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace. You despite the Spirit of grace. When you despite what God's word is, that's worse than what people died on Moses' law. He giving us the best opportunity because we are the grace, meaning that we ain't got to take no animals. We ain't got to kill off our livestock. Back then, they had to take an animal, and also, you'll be killed for certain sins back then immediately. Exactly. If you commit adultery, you got two people seeing you do it. Oh, you died. You stoned to death. But now, you don't have to do it. You won't be stoned. You just go and ask God to forgive you. Hopefully, you stop. You know what I'm saying? Certain sins you'll be killed for. Homosexuality you'll be killed for. Hopefully you cut people that are homosexual can come out of that. So don't die in your sin. Thank you for your time. Hope it's beneficial. You know